Right, with the pen around the finish, I still want to make a stand for this because I can't keep it on my workbench forever and the workbench isn't really the correct height for me. So I've placed it on my secondary workbench and this seems to be just the right height for me. I really like the stand I made for the band saw, so I'm going to do something similar for the stand for the pen router. For a lot of my shop projects, I prefer to use scraps around the workshop instead of buying anything new, which helps me to stay afloat in my workshop because I am drowning in wood. Once I got everything milled down, I can use my very trustworthy box joint jig to join the corners. And then I can glue one of the two frames together. The day after, I used my hand plane to make the surface look pretty again and to also make the frame square and flat with a minimum amount of twist. Once I got one corner square, I can reference off those edges and trim the other side parallel on the table saw. Having the blade all the way out was quite hairy and by the grunting sound made by the saw, I kind of regret not changing the blade to a dedicated ripping blade. Then I can reference off the two edges I just cut on the saw and clean up the rest of the two sides. The maximum blade height on my table saw was just not high enough to trim the sides completely. So I'm using my hand plane to clean up the bit of wood left over. Next I can make the rails out of more scraps. Originally I was going to cut floating tenons on the ends of these rails to join them to the frame because my pencil router was still at school just like the one done here but because of exams I wasn't able to come back to this project until three weeks later and since then I have been able to get my pen router back and therefore I've set it up to cut some floating tenons into the ends of these rails. Although cutting a mortise doesn't produce as much dust as a tenon but cutting 14 of them, two was cut manually on the router was a good test for the efficiency of the dust collection system and the durability of the shroud. The test cuts I made at school for testing the dust collection was more than just rigged because this is the filter I found inside a shop vac I used at school. Anyways, to be fair, I would say the pen router is able to collect at least 90% of the dust when cutting a mortise. Cutting a tenon might be worse. With all the mortises cut out, I can now start making the floating tenons out of this scrap piece of pine. Okay, I've got the dry fit done, so now let's glue it up. For the side panel, I'm going to use this piece of melamine and to attach it to the bottom side of this frame, I'm going to use the router to create a rebate or a recess. Then I can square the corners off with a chisel. Now before I go glue these in place, I'm going to chamfer the corners and also sand the surface a little bit. And once again, scram the corners off with a chisel. Now I can send the panels to be almost finished ready.
<sighs> I've used up all my big clamps and all my small clamps to do this and now I just have to wait for the glue to dry it's the very next day and I've gave this quite a bit of sanding to make it look good again and I've also decided to add another cross piece down the middle to support the base of the panorama and also to support the linear bearings which run across the middle of the base the middle piece should stop it from sagging too much and since this is a shop project I'm going to challenge myself to actually join this piece to the frame with a half lap dovetail. And now I can clean up the little bit of wood left by the table saw. And now I'll just roughly mark out the centre of the frame. And also the centre of the beam. Which looks to be right about here. So that I can now line up the two marks together and roughly centre it between the two rails of the frame. Then I can clamp it down and mark its position. Now I can use the chisel to create a small ledge. I can then repeat the same thing on the other side. Before I forget, I'm cutting half of the dovetail away to create the half lap. To speed up the process, I'm using my router to hog out most of the material. And then finally I can start chiseling this away. After quite a bit of work, I finally got both of them done. And now I just need to chamfer the edges off before hammering it together. Not bad. First ever try and fits like a charm. I think this is also my very first half lap dovetail that I've made. So let's glue this up. Okay, after a bit of doodling on my piece of paper, I've worked out my size for my drawers. But I'm going to make the drawer fronts first because that requires a glue up and I have to wait for that to dry. So I'm going to glue this one up and then wait for the glue to dry while I'm making the drawers. I am using hardwood rails as drawer runners because the metal ones are really expensive or I would have to wait till a container arrives from China. Back is also just screwed on. Now I can get back to the drawer fronts and trim them to size.
Okay, while the glue is drying on the drawer front, I'm going to take the opportunity to actually put some casters on this thing. Now I've got the pencil rod on the sand and it's looking pretty good. But before I get too excited and put the drawers in, which will be hard to get out again, I'm going to put some handles on them. And for that purpose, I made a very simple jig to locate the holes for the handle. It is basically an L shape with two holes corresponding to the holes on the handle on one side and a center mark between them. Then you line up the mark on the jig with the center mark of the drawer and drill the holes. Before putting the handles on, I scrape the surface nice and clean. I gave this two coats of varnish and now it looks really nice but there's some empty drawers here so let's fill them up for some reason this feels a lot more exciting than Christmas and oddly enough they fit my modular boxes with six a row although it has a gap at the end but that should help me to build up a second row like that well, I guess that concludes the entire Pants Router project with sand and machine itself. I've got lots and lots of stuff planned for this machine, so make sure to stick around by subscribing, leaving a thumbs up. Yeah, I think that's how the big YouTubers do it. Anyways, thank you for all those who have supported me along the way, and special thanks to Matthias Swandle for coming up with this machine, and also my high school for helping me build this machine. Now my exams have just ended and my two month summer holidays have just started so I should be able to pump up much more videos.